Uh, I'm Pooja Sri and we are here at the 11th Canadian Science Policy Conference being held in Ottawa. And with me here is Dr. Guy Rouleau. He is the director of uh, Montreal Neurological Institute, the uh, chair of uh, the Department of Neuro Neurology and Neurosurgery, and the director of the Department of uh, Neuroscience, as well as the co-founder of Open Bomb, t sorry, Tittenbaum Open Science Institute. So uh, we are glad to have you here, Dr. Uh, Rulo. Thank you. So uh, to begin with, uh, it would be great if you could share a little bit about your background that has brought you into this position with MNI and all the other positions that you uh, currently yeah. have. So I, I started as a neurologist and mm -hmm. then did a PhD in genetics and came back to Montreal and basically did worked as a neurologist and as a researcher uh, in neurogenetics. And after quite a few years, I sort of got interested in doing other things, more administrative work. Uh, and I ended up by, uh, by moving to the University of Montreal from McGill, developing a center of excellence, uh, director of research at pediatric hospital. And then I, I moved to the Montreal Neurological Institute and Hospital McGill uh, because I'm a neurologist and that's what I know best. So that's kind of uh, how I got to where I am. Wow, that's beautiful. Uh, so as a neuroscientist myself, mm -hmm. I'm actually curious to know about your perspective on the role of scientists as either the stakeholders or influencers of policy making in, in the science landscape, in the policy landscape, especially in Canada. Canada. Yeah, I think that scientists have a, a very strong role to, be a, to, to, to make sure that science is reproducible science sure. is shared mm -hmm. and uh, reagents are shared mm -hmm. i think it it fits what yes. most scientists believe in uh, people do science because they want to do good and uh, they need to influence the system to be certain that good is done Absolutely. yeah that's that makes sense uh, also uh, please tell us a little about your vision in co-founding the open science institute that you did yeah so some years ago, a few years ago, the Montreal Neurological Institute and Hospital decided to become an open institution, which mm -hmm. basically we had to define what that was because open means different things to different people, but essentially it meant for us that we would uh, share all biomaterials, all reagents that are created at the neuro, and all the data and information uh, no later than the publication of the, of the, of the paper. We would encourage other institutions to do the same. In other words, uh, we, don't, we don't do material transfer agreements. We don't do uh, these kinds of things. Uh, we wanted to create open science platforms, and we did. We did a, an open biobank uh, and uh, also an open drug discovery platform. And uh, we decided that we were not going to do patents because we thought that patents at least in the early stage of research, which we do mostly early stage, uh, is really a hindrance mm -hmm. that, rather than, than something that will help. So that's how we defined open science. We embarked on that. Uh, Mr. Tannenbaum, who is a philanthropist in Toronto, uh, really liked that notion. In fact, uh, most people, in, lay people, are kind of surprised that it's not already like that. Uh, and uh, he, he made an important donation and what he wanted was two things he wanted half of it to help us to become open because open is not free it, sure. I mean you have to build things and you have to organize things uh, and the other half is to in, is to encourage and uh, other institutions to become open and I think that's the maybe the answer to your question is uh, the Tanbaum uh, Open Science Institute is uh, in conversations with uh, different institutions in Canada, uh, for example, the Moafagian Institute, which is in Vancouver, uh, the uh, Hodgkiss in Calgary, uh, and different institutions in Toronto, as well as other institutions in Montreal, like the Douglas Hospital. And they are all at various stages of examining, uh, examining the notion of becoming an open institution as well. So I think it's kind of a catalyst for spreading the open science across uh, across Canada and we're focusing on Canada but we're also I mean uh, we're also involved in the US uh, and Stanford is very interested and I think there's going to be a unit in Stanford that's going to uh, adopt open science and then there are some others in Europe who are interested as well. Oh, that's wonderful so how would you comment on 
how the vision has uh, started getting realized? What what kind of impact do you already see this kind of open science making in? Yeah, I, I think that for now, the major impact is 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 awareness and increasing interest. Uh, there was just a, a one of the one of the sessions this morning. It's the second time we do it. The first time the room was half empty, and this time the room was standing room only. So I think there's an increasing interest and increasing understanding. Uh, I think that's probably the major thing because in the end, what it is, it's a change of culture. You know, we need to change the science culture from what it was to what we think it should be. Uh, and, and certainly, you know, a lot of funders, uh, a lot of governments uh, really believe that open science is the right way to go. And as a researcher, I attest that too. I think that can revolutionize uh, science. Uh, speaking about the open science, that's something you would be discussing on your panel today as well. So yes. uh, before, of course, the panel uh, is concluded, uh, what would be your thoughts as what could be the take home message from the panel? What could be the gist of uh, it, if you may? Well, the panel that I'm on is really on open access. And I think that the the, the conclusion will be that open access is the only way to go mm -hmm. and, and that it's coming mm -hmm. uh, and that we need to build the different ways uh, that we will achieve the open access. Uh, I think that's going to be the conclusion. You mentioned young, you're a young researcher. Uh, I have found that the young researchers are very open to open science Absolutely. and uh, I think that the the future of open science is assured by the, by the fact that the, the young people who are going to become eventually the senior people, but anyhow, uh, that they're very, very open to it. So I'm optimistic that it's going to happen. It's the older guys like me and girls who uh, need to be convinced, uh, but the younger ones, uh, I think the future is uh, bright. Absolutely, I agree. Uh, 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 and CSPC is thrilled to have you here today for this panel and for the conference. Mm -hmm. But uh, as you know, the CSPC is commemorating its 10 years in science yeah. uh, in, in, in Canadian policy landscape as well. So uh, where, what do you see as the biggest value that CSPC has been able to add over the years to, to the science or to the po policy landscape of Canada? Yeah, I, I think that the this 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 meeting and this this uh, this uh, activity, if you want, mm -hmm. uh, is very important to be able to evolve. And so, you know, the world is changing; it's always changing. And uh, usually, you know, institutions are way behind. And the only way to move forward is to have meetings like this, where we focus on policy, where we discuss policy. Uh, where we invite visionaries uh, and where we we kind of map out the future and it's it's again it's it's a continuous culture change if you wish uh, so I think that's the that's the value of the meeting for me oh, well absolutely and we're hopeful towards uh, the betterment of uh, science through the open uh, access and open science and it was I, it was I, I was glad to have you here uh, and we're looking forward to your panel thank, thank you, you.